Hello again. In this video, we're going to create an Xcode project inside of a Git repository, and then we're going to push that project up to our remote GitHub repository. Okay, so we've got our Git repository already, already created. Let's go ahead and open up Xcode. And let's create a new project. I'm going to create a single view application. And we'll call this lab2. I'm going to use my name again. Uh, and then you can put whatever you want here, but organization name is usually the company you're working for. Organization identifier is important when we publish apps, usually a uh, reverse domain. And then obviously we're using Swift, not Objective C. Uh, we're using the iPhone, or we're going to create the app for the iPhone. Click next. And here's the important part. Make sure that we put this project into the root of our reposit of our uh, Git repository. So mine is documents code. And then here's the name of my repository. And this is kind of cool. Uh, if we're not inside of a repository below, you can create a Git repository right from this uh, new project dialog. But if we're inside of a repository, especially if we're inside a repository we've already shared with our instructor, notice that it's grayed out, so we can't select Create Git Repository. So that's a nice indicator that we're inside the right folder. I'm going to go ahead and click Create now. <clears throat> and there you have it. So now if we go out to uh, Finder, you'll see that it's created the project inside of our repository folder. So it exists locally on our computer, but does not exist remotely on github.com. So what we need to do is we need to push this to our to the uh, remote server. So there's a few steps. So typically, we, if we were using a command line, which is kind of the traditional way to, to use Git repositories, we would add the files. So that's a command, add. Then we would commit the files. That's uh, saying that we're saving them to the repository. We're saving all of those files, all those changes to the repository. And then we would push. And push takes our files from our local machine and uploads them to the github.com server. So I'm going I'm to click on commit. That's the first thing we need to do. Notice that it's flagged all of the files that we're adding with an A. We're going to add them. Okay, and down below here is where we're going to enter um, um, a message that describes what's in the commit. So I'm going to say created lab to project. And after we commit all of our files, we need to do a push. And we can do that two ways. So, so first of all, we can say source control, commit, and then come back after the commit and select push and push it up to the remote server. Uh, Xcode's added this nice feature though from the commit dialog we can select push to remote so now it's going to automatically do the add the commit and the push in one step real nice right so I'm going to select or check this box push to remote and then click on commit and push and hopefully it's uploaded our file so I'm going to go check to make sure right so let's go out to github.com. I'm logged on as myself and you can see your repositories here. I don't see an IT2100 so I'm going to go ahead and refresh it and now we see the IT2100 repository and if we would have clicked in there right after creating the repository you wouldn't see any folders or files listed here but now that we have pushed our files 25 seconds ago now you see the folder for our project. If we click in there it matches what's on our local hard drive. Okay, so there you go. We've uh, now uh, created a project inside of our repository locally. We've committed all the files and then we pushed it up to the remote server. Now there's a way I want you to indicate what, what, uh, at what point in the project you want me to, to look at. And the way that we do that is we have something called a commit ID. So when you when you fired off that commit and you added that comment, GitHub actually adds an ID that um, uniquely identifies each commit. So here's 
uh, created lab two project. That's the comment that I added. And then here's the commit ID. And it's an abbreviated version, but that's the commit ID. So when you go to submit your labs, I want two things. I want, first of all, I want the path to your repository. So when you share when you share it with me, you've got a path to your repository. Here it is. Whoops. Here it is, right? GitHub.com, your username, and then the name of the repository. I want you to add that, if you can, to the comments section in Blackboard. And then also, there's a commit ID. If you could add that to the comments section, then I know exactly what point you want to save it to. Uh, if you want to see the full version of that commit ID, you come over to the project, and, and here's the Project Lab 2, and you can click on, from this screen, uh, history and there you'll see the commit and if you click on this commit ID you'll see um, there's a full commit ID it's a full GUID there so you're welcome to copy and paste that in uh, the, the abbreviated version is fine though okay so that's cool we've created the project we've committed it added all those files committed it and then pushed it up to the github.com server. So that, that's, that's the important stuff. So now let's, uh, let's make some changes. Uh, so I'll add a new file. Um, let's see. Let's just add an empty file. Uh, I'll call it readme. And then uh, to say lab two. And then let's let's add some assets. I think we've got some assets we're gonna add to the lab two uh, project. Let's see. Okay, so let's add a Wave file. And I'm going to copy it into the project. So click finish. Um, and we can add a background icon. Okay, that's good enough. And let's just uh, let's just go ahead and stop there. And so we've got uh, a new file we've added, and we made some changes. So we've changed the uh, assets file. So now let's go ahead and commit it, and you can see what's been modified there and what's been added. So let's say added readme and assets. And let's push it. And then let's go back to the website. And now you can see it's uploaded the wave file there. 14 seconds ago and you can see it's added the readme file and it's modified the uh, assets file so what I'm showing you here is as you're developing as you make changes you don't have to do it as often as you save you should continually though commit and push up to the server when you do that you're creating a history so you can see if we view the history, uh, each time that you run a commit, it's going to be added to the history. And and yes, this, for those of you thinking ahead, this does add a lot of functionality. I mean, we can roll back changes if we need to, or revert back changes if we need to. Uh, it also helps us in a team environment. So if two of us are developing, uh, we can actually create our own copies in GitHub, make changes, try things out. 
uh, and then merge it back. Now we're going to stay on the same branch. We're going to stay on the master branch and just keep it as simple as possible in terms of GitHub. Uh, if this is your first time using a Git repository, I think the simpler the better because we want to focus really on the Xcode. Xcode functionality and, and writing Swift code. So that's it. Make sure that you commit and push often. Uh, and make sure that when you submit your assignments in Blackboard that you include two things, right? Your The path to your repository and the last commit that you've made to the lab assignment that we're working on. Okay, thanks. Let me know if you have any questions.